This is a Japanese futon, also known in Japan as a shiki futon. While these are incredibly common in Japanese culture, in other countries, like America, not so much. Yet tons of individuals, including myself, have chosen to completely get rid of their westernized bed and instead sleep on this very thin mattress. And that's not because they're a cheaper option or because they look cool. Um, it's because I truly believe that these are the best thing for you to sleep on. Let me tell you why. But first, let's address the problems with westernized mattresses, how these beds are affecting your sleep, your back, and potentially leading to toxic chemical exposure. Have you ever wondered what's in your mattress? Most mattresses in history were usually thin and made of natural materials. It was only within the last 100 to 200 years that companies started making thick mattresses from unnatural materials. Not only does our body need a firm mattress to sleep on, but also the material and the structure and the density of that material being used in the mattress attributes to not only the firmness, but also to things like chemical toxic exposure. They don't want the consumer to know that they're sleeping in chemicals, that they could easily look up and find out they're toxic. They're not looking out for the consumer. They're looking out for the chemical industry. In 2007, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission issued safety regulations requiring all mattresses to have flame retardants in order to pass flammability tests. While there are chemical-free and natural flame retardants that can be used, most of the mattresses that you find on the market are treated with chemical flame retardants that have been shown to be toxic to humans. Despite the growing concern over flame retardant chemicals, the industry, along with groups supported by industry, is lobbying to increase the use of chemicals in a wide range of consumer products. Modern day mattresses are made in tons of different ways and with tons of different materials, but the most common seen on the market is high density polyurethane foam. The likelihood that you've seen this before in some shape or form is high. They're also commonly seen as mattress toppers. This foam is not only terrible for your back, as it doesn't give you the support that you need, but it's also incredibly flammable and therefore heavily treated with chemical flame retardants. But people have claimed that these flame retardants don't even work in real scenarios and the tests that they go through don't actually play out in real life. So what's wrong with this test? It does not reproduce what happens in real scale. Some of the tests that the CPSC did, they lit two chairs on fire. The only thing that was different about the two chairs is one had regular foam and one had foam treated with a flame retardant chemical. And what the CPSC found is there was no meaningful difference in those fires. After four minutes, both chairs were fully on fire. Now that sounds like a nice idea. They're gonna save us from mattress fires, right? They're looking out for the consumer. Uh, that's false. They are not looking out for the consumer. Now the use of chemicals as flame retardants in these mattresses has gotten better. As an example, in 2009, they actually banned the use of PBDEs. Some chemicals called PBDEs are leaching out, building up in people. They can affect the developing brain and they can affect the developing reproductive system. But there are still people that are claiming that most mattresses are still sprayed with toxic chemicals. Her mattress has, you'll notice here, 757 parts per million. In other words, it has 3,500 times the level of antimony that is considered safe. No wonder Rachel has permanent neurological damage. Antimony is more toxic than mercury. It destroys, it destroys your neurological system. Mattress companies are actually receiving lawsuits due to toxic chemical exposure that people are getting from being exposed to these mattresses. Because there is a class action lawsuit against Tempur-Pedic in Texas for the volatile organic compounds and formaldehyde in their mattresses. The Consumer Product Safety Commission didn't do this to make mattresses flame retardant, they did it to make the chemical industry rich. So if you're purchasing a mattress from a company that doesn't list what chemicals they use as flame retardants, this could pose a large problem to your health. And then like I mentioned, the structure and the density of these materials and compared to natural materials is different. Have you ever seen the videos of like people jumping on a bed and there's a glass of wine and it doesn't spill? Um, while that's great for the wine drinkers, um, that's terrible for your back. With a soft mattress, it doesn't really support your body appropriately. So as you can see, there's way too much sag in the soft mattress and that does not allow your spine to remain properly aligned. When you sleep on a mattress, you actually want the mattress to support you. You don't want to sink into it. I know it might feel comfy when you do sink into the bed, and I think companies have 
maximized on this fact that people like soft things, but your back doesn't and your sleep quality doesn't. So this is in my opinion why Japanese futons are the best thing for you to sleep on. You can find chemical free Japanese futons that are also made from natural and organic materials that are naturally flame resistant. And Japanese futons are commonly found in three inches but even if you go higher to six inches or nine inches thickness, because of the material inside of the mattress, you're getting the correct density and structure that you need in a material for your back to get the support that it needs while it's sleeping. So it's a solution to the issue of not only the chemicals, but also to the correct firmness that you need and that your body is designed to sleep on. There's just enough give to remain in your natural alignment, but it's not so soft that you have no support. It's just the right amount of cushion, not too much and not too little. Now the Japanese futon that I sleep on is three inches thick, made out of organic cotton, and this is kind of the traditional Japanese size and style. It's also on top of two traditional tatami mats. When I went to Japan, they actually have rooms filled with these um, where they drink tea and they will then fold up their beds and bring them out and lay them on these tatami mats. The tatami mats allow these to breathe and prevent mold. And they're also cool looking and I like it better than the mattress being directly on the floor. Now, some people are not attracted to the idea of sleeping on the floor and I totally get it. Uh, good news, actually you can buy lifted beds um, for these with built-in tatami mats. Um, and those are a great solution for people that either don't want to sleep on the floor for whatever reason, um, or maybe you want some extra storage. Um, these lifted beds are great and I highly recommend them. I slept directly on the floor with my futon for around two years and then a company actually sent me one of these lifted beds. I really liked it, especially because um, most of the time I'm staying in pretty small spaces. So being able to store things underneath the bed is great but I actually think there are some health benefits to sleeping directly on the floor. Um, getting up and down, it causes you to bend and move your knees. So I think you're more mobile. I also just like sleeping on the floor better. Um, but like I said, due to the fact that I don't have very much space, I usually opt for sleeping on the lifted bed to just maximize my small space. Now this is my third and final Shiki Bhutan video and it marks four years of sleeping on a Japanese futon. I have no intention of ever purchasing a traditional westernized bed again for the reasons I mentioned in this video. And in the process of making these videos, I've received thousands of comments and messages talking about the benefits that people have noticed from sleeping on these, like fixing sciatica, lower back pain, sometimes chronic back pain, and also just improving their sleep. I've even heard scoliosis. It's pretty crazy. And I've noticed tons of benefits from sleeping on this, so I'm pretty sold to not buy a westernized bed again. But I've also gotten a lot of questions. People always ask me like, how is this X on the bed and stuff like that. Um, and rather than boring you guys answering all these frequently asked questions, I created a document which you can find in the description. And this just basically goes over all of the frequently asked questions that people have and my answers to those. So if you have any questions, you can comment below or check out that document as it might have the answer to your question. I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and supporting me throughout the years on YouTube and I have more videos coming, so stay tuned. See you guys.